uh, have to mute everybody, okay, uh, after uh, the start of our training. And here is an attendant form. And please help us to fill in it, then we can know your attendance. Okay. Okay. Oh, good afternoon. <laughs> Okay, um, and today's training is regarding the uh, DJI Enterprise solution for aerial survey. And in fact, this training uh, is partially overlapped with our last training with, uh, with the topic we have shared last week. So some part maybe I will go a little faster and, uh, and yeah. Uh, we all know that from uh, campus instruments taped to total station and RTK, satellites serving and mapping industry is always driven by the technologies. But to achieve high level accuracy of serving and mapping mission, it's still time consuming and expensive. We think it is about the time to change. Mm, just like back to the old days when when we first have uh, total staging at RDKs, how those products changed our workflow and quickly became uh, became uh, must have instruments for serving industry. And now we believe the next big big change is there, and I hope every one of us can sit in this conference room and can catch this train and we together to speed it up is change and together to train and educate our servers and end users to get familiar of new tech, uh, technologies faster. Yeah. <laughs> Through this train, which I would love to use our drone technologies to make the servering and mapping workflow a lot easier and affordable. Uh, from experts to every one of us, and it's not necessary to know all the serving and the mapping ready knowledge to do the job. So that means, in fact, every one of us could be a server on the basis of our knowledge of the tools, how to use our drones, how to use our software to do a quick, uh, efficient, high, uh, high quality, serving a uh, job and mapping job. So please allow me to introduce our first core uh, aerial service solution uh, with two products which we are already familiar with, I suppose. Uh, that is Phantom for RDK and DJI Terra. And also I will introduce some other products such as uh, Phantom for multi-spectrum, our new products for agricultural or uh, or uh, or uh, some some city planning work and uh, and after in fact the fan for RDK and the fan for multispectral vintage I tower are our mainstream promoted solution for servering and later I will also offer some some alternative choice if we have and uh, if we have some other products. Uh, we have to say that Phantom 4 RDK and DJI Tower, and there are several uh, major scenarios that we believe we are perfectly fit for this solution. And of course, there are always more applications that could fit for this solution. We can use it for uh, construction uh, super, super, supervision. We can use it for emergency emergency mapping services uh, for a quick response after emergency and guides the rescuers to find a, a most suitable uh, route to reach the rescuees. 
And we can use it for Asian building modeling to help governments to protect the Asian building. We can use it for road river and power line corridor inspection. We can use it for traditional error serving and mapping and stockpile measurement, close ranger photogram uh, photogrammetry, multispectral analysis for smart farming and environmental production. <clears throat> Uh, this page basically tells us uh, why 24 RDK is good enough that it could perfectly fit for the serving and the mapping missions without adding GCPs. Because it's durable flight performance, that, uh, RDK provides precision meeting planning and individual camera celebration combined with, uh, with RDK technologies without uh, most accurate map and uh, we can also use PBK and uh, the RDK 2.0 to achieve a high accuracy. And we can uh, also use uh, NTRIP support. It provides rich working methods that users could freely to choose based on the real environments. Uh, and in this page, I suppose we already familiar with the specifications of Phantom 4 RDK. We know that it has a good payload camera uh, with uh, 20 million effective pixels and the positioning accuracy we, uh, which we can achieve based on the RDK module, which is vertical 1.5 centimeter, horizontal 1 centimeter, I suppose we're already familiar with that. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, we can use uh, the RDK mobile station uh, for, uh, for Phantom 4 RDK to achieve uh, the high accuracy pos positioning. And we all know that's uh, the RDK 2.0 that is designed perfectly fits for Phantom 4 RDK and it will be a great weapon to support the Phantom 4 RDK to achieve high accuracy map mission when they don't have net RDK coverage. You can use this mobile station. And uh, for how to achieve RDK with Phantom 4 RDK, there are actually four ways to, to, uh, to achieve it. Uh, we can uh, connect uh, connect to net uh, to net RDK, and we can also use the, the RDK just uh, just like what I mentioned before. And we can uh, if you have a third part RDK and you have your server uh, to offer an entry account, you can also use that, and you can also use PPK to achieve the centimeter level uh, accuracy. So there are four ways to use Phantom RDK to do the mapping mission. And actually all the methods above are all available in Europe. And uh, the Trace RDK application is the software we are using for the remote controller of Phantom for RDK. Uh, it has powerful function uh, such as uh, we can have a lot of choice for the for uh, uh, for the for the mission planning. We can choose uh, to, uh, 2D, 3D uh, photogrammetry. We can uh, we can achieve the waypoint flight mission planning. We can apply a we can apply a liner flight a flight mission. We can apply terror awareness mode, and we can also block. Uh, segmentation, but uh, it is actually for the multi-control function of Phantom 4 RDK, which means we can use one remote controller to uh, work with five Phantom 4 RDK drums simultaneously, uh, which can greatly enhance our efficiency.
uh, for 2D photogrammetry, I suppose it is easy to understand. Uh, it is designed uh, uh, for the 2D area mapping mission. It is a kind of most common methods. Uh, it is a most common choices when we are using Fanable RDK. And for, for, for liner flight mission, it is actually designed for liner type of mission like uh, the utility inspection for, uh, for river, for road, for pipeline, this kind of area mapping, uh, map mapping mission. Uh, and we can also use the terror awareness mode. Uh, actually, uh, by importing the DSM, uh, Fanny for RDK could easily fly the area with huge fluctuation, uh, fluctu uh, fluctuation change of the uh, and and uh, of the of the elevation and always keep the GSD at the same level. Mm, but please note that the Fanny for RDK will only support uh, the uh, the DSM, which is under WGS84 geographic coordinate system. If the DSM has projection on it, then it cannot be success successfully imported to GSR applications. This is one point we have to notice. Uh, for 3D photogrammetry, we have actually two modes. One is double grid and the other is uh, multi-oriented in this page. Um, the, how do you say, the multi-oriented mission planning is perfectly fit for relatively low attitude and high accuracy mapping mission. Thus, double grid is fit for high attitude and a relative lower accuracy and uh, tariff awareness mode gives gives the end user ability to work at large fluctuation in the tavern and keep the GST always at the same level. Uh, uh, for the mobile station uh, connect, uh, connectivity with JS RDK application, actually, uh, we have uh, we have some some additional functions uh, based on this connectivity. Uh, I remember that I uh, I introduced this function in our last in our last week training, such as we can use the, the RDK station if you have two, one to set it as base station and the other set is uh, set it as handhold mode. Then we can use it to to work as handheld RDK devices to create our, uh, our, our own coordinate system uh, for uh, or achieve the current coordinate measurement. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a highlight function of uh, for RDK that uh, we can just like what I uh, introduced in the past. We can uh, use one remote controller to connect with five uh, as the maximum uh, quantity of the of the Fanon for RDK, which we call it as multi uh, UAV control. Uh, and also, we can use another function called regional division. Then we can. Uh, we can uh, we can enhance our efficiency. That means we can do the serving and mapping job uh, with five Fanon RDK simultaneously. Then our efficiency will be uh, will be five times higher. Uh, but this function is suitable for uh, for is actually suitable for large area of the two D photogrammetry. And it can only support it for Fanon for RDK, and also needs to work with JSR application. Uh, 
Mm, and so uh, one last thing to, to highlight in this page is that uh, the DJI Tower is supposed to possess all the data from uh, different Fenton 4 RDK at once. So it is, uh, it is a kind of end-to-end -end solution to enhance our efficiency when we are uh, we, we, when we are going to do a uh, 2D photogrammetry for large area, this kind of work. And also uh, we can support PPK services uh, with, uh, with Phantom 4 RDK. And actually this service is only supported in China and Europe now. So in Europe it is okay. And uh, uh, it is uh, easy to use and the accuracy level is like uh, uh, RDK. Uh, and actually we can support it by both uh, the RDK 2.0 mobile station and Renex data from the third party base station if you have. Uh, this is an important part. Uh, Phantom 4 multispectral, uh, multispectral. This part actually we haven't given an introduction last week, and we can use the uh, we can use the DJI tower to co cooperate with it uh, to uh, to be used in in precision ag uh, agriculture or uh, ecological research and other scenarios. Uh, such as environmental monitoring, etc. It can, uh, because Phantom 4 multispectral have six sensors. One is for RGB and the other five can, uh, is work for some other spectrum. So we can use them to collect, uh, collect five uh, vegetation indicators such as NDVI. Uh, so we can get the growth information of uh, of crops to it, then uh, that will enhance our, that will uh, help help our work uh, for, for agriculture mission. And uh, it can also achieve centimeter level uh, RDK position, uh, position because it also has an RDK uh, module on the top of the, of the drone. Like this part, and it can also uh, support OxySync and TimeSync. It can also support the uh, compatibility with uh, the RDK2 mobile station <coughs> and entry. Uh, it has uh, six sensors, and which are this size with global shutter. And uh, we have three axes, stabilized gimbal, and the, uh, we all have two million pixels, effective pixels. And except one, uh, besides one sensor for visible light for RGB, the other five can collect, uh, it can help us to collect spectral information as, diff as different wavelengths such as red age, uh, near infrared, and green, red, blue. And then we can process this information to generate the five uh, veg uh, vegetation in, uh, in indicators to take a reference for our work in agriculture industry. It is also equipped with uh, RDK model uh, which maximizes the accuracy and consistency of data collection through different times of day. And, uh, and before send out any of the for multispectrum to the market, we have done the celebration work of each job. And in fact, each of the sensor has been uh, celebrated during the production uh, process to ensure consistency across different aircraft. Uh, this page uh, 
uh, we can see that uh, the phantom for multispectrum, in, in fact, it can shows uh, it, it can uh, shows the real time uh, the set the center the center value of each band in this line and the gain value of each narrow band camera, and we can uh, also see the shadow time of each narrow band camera. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I just mentioned that uh, because we uh, also uh, integrated uh, RDK module on this uh, on this aircraft, so we can achieve centimeter level uh, precision, just like uh, Fanvol RDK. You can use it to uh, to collect real time accurate positioning data on images, and. Uh, and uh, after the, the the mapping, we can also uh, to we can also obtain centimeter level uh, accurate measurement. This function is actually just like uh, what uh, was for RTK have, like the uh, comp compatibility with the DRK to mobile station, like the time sync system. Uh, like we can store the satellite observation data to be used for post-processed uh, kinematic. And here, let's move for uh, let's move to DJI Tower. Uh, we all know that DJI Tower is an uh, application that integrates uh, autonomous street planning, aerial photography, 2D and 3D model reconstruction and model measurement. We can use it to support multiple route planning methods, such as the way, waypoint of light, which we are familiar with. And we can use it to achieve real-time mapping. We can use it to obtain high precision, high, high quality uh, auto photos that can be generated by image, uh, image post-processing. We can use it to achieve 3D model. Mm, with high efficiency, and it can be used in a lot of scenarios. Uh, actually, uh, uh, just like what I described, that uh, DJI Tower can not only work with Fanable RDK, but it can also work with uh, Fanable Multispectrum. This is actually N sample. Uh, we can use Fanform multispectrum to collect uh, collect information through six sensor, and then DJI Tower can automatically uh, do the processing of it and it generates the five indi uh, five indica uh, indicators of the vegetation: G and DVI, LCI, NDRE, NDVI, OSAVI. And uh, we can use DJI Tower to achieve real-time 2D mapping. The efficiency is really high, and this is actually the most important thing we are interested in when we are uh, doing this job. Uh, here's an example. Uh, uh, we can uh, fly it once uh, with an altitude of 100 meters, and uh, to obtain 76 images and within four minutes to do a mapping of 0 0.06 kilometers, square kilometers. Here's a video shows this, uh, this progress.
we can easily to use it to achieve real-time mapping. Then we can uh, set a mission and do the mission planning with DJI Terra. We can set the flight height, flight speed, and then we can do the servering uh, real time, just like this video shows. The processing progress is really, really quick. Yeah, this is just one mission. Okay, I suppose that is. And for and for mission uh, for real time processing, we can also do the real time processing for point cloud, three uh, D point cloud. Here's an also an example. We can see that uh, this is a video for the screen, uh, not not a screenshot, just a video uh, taken for the screen of the of of the JSR. We can see that the efficiency is really high. So that's uh, actually the efficiency is the most important highlight of our solution, which makes it suitable for uh, for emergency response and for some real time measurements. This part, this this point is actually really really important. You can. You can uh, image. Uh, you can imagine that when you are in a mission of uh, of uh, when 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 an a natural disaster happened, such as earthquake or flood disaster, and after the disaster, we have to do the rescue and the disaster assessment. Then the high efficiency of the solution can help us save a lot of time. So. It is actually very, very important. Uh, but there are two points to, uh, to be noted. One is that uh, the real-time generation uh, only supports Phantom 4 RDK or Phantom 4 uh, Pro or 2, and less uh, OBJ formats will be supported to export. And uh, DJI Terra also have some integrated internal measurement tools, which is really powerful. Uh, uh, here's some uh, a simple workflow. In the in the model reconstruction interface of the two D or three D model project, we can click the annotation and the measurements button to enter the measurements interface. And uh, we can uh, turn on the function and click anywhere on the module and all photos that at this location will pop up. You can view the photo details as needed. And actually in the measurement bar, we can, we can do the measurement of coordinates of distance, area, and value. Uh, so it is actually uh, very, very usable in some, uh, some mapping for, for mining cooperation, for, uh, uh, let me just explain this, this case. Uh, we can imagine that when we are in, in, a mining, uh, in, in a mining scenario, we can use Fan4RDK to, uh, to, uh, to do a quick, uh, to, to do a quick serving, and then we can, uh, measure the material we have obtained, and yeah, so the we, we can use it for this scenario. It is it is really powerful. And uh, wait a minute, the measurement uh, measurement bar is actually here. This is for coordinate. This is for distance. This is for area and value. Uh, the most important highlights of 
data at power is the is the efficiency. Uh, here's an example. Um, uh, this is uh, the processing speed of of TDOM, and actually it is double compared with most uh, common or popular third-party similar software. We can see that uh, with for 47 images, it only took two minutes. And with the, uh, such as 400 uh, images, it only took around 20 minutes. And uh, although the efficiency is depends on the, the configuration of the, of the computer, Here's our configuration. It is a common configuration. Uh, I7 uh, CPU, uh, 1050 uh, TIE for GPU, and 32 uh, GB for the RAM. Uh, just like what I introduced in the past, I mentioned that DJI Tower and plus Fenderford key or Fenderford multi-spectrum. This application is you. Uh, it is really really suitable for quick emergency response and disaster assessment. In this page, uh, we have a word unique. The reason I said I said it was unique is because um, DJI Tower is able to produce the error map simultaneously while the drone was flying and not just because of that but also compared with other similar software DJI Tower can save significant amount of time which allows a uh, decision maker could have the high resolution uh, area map on the high reading minutes in a short time which is not possible for other third-party software currently so Mm, this is the most important uh, highlight or the value of DJI Tower. And I suppose we can use it as one of our selling strategy when we are facing the customers. Here's an uh, example. Uh, it is actually a case of an, of an analysis of a transportation accident. We can create a model uh, with Fanifor RDK and uh, DJI Tower. Then we can, uh, we, we, we can do the analysis uh, after uh, we, we can do the post-processing analysis <coughs> uh, by policemen, and they can they can treat it as a proof or evidence. Uh, in this case, the flight time is only four minutes, and we took uh, one hundred and ten images. the The flying time is actually uh, uh, I'm sorry. The image importing time is only twenty three seconds, and the three D modeling time is twenty two minutes. The GST is 0 0.3 centimeter in this case. And here's another case for uh, disaster assessment, just like what I said before. Mm, Phantom 4 RDK plus DJI Tower is a really important solution for disaster assessment. We can use, uh, we can use it to, uh, to directly achieve uh, achieve the 2D photography of, uh, of the disaster area. Uh, this case is actually um, is actually for uh, uh, for a woodland area. The wood this woodland area was damaged, and we quickly sent out the Fanny for RDK in this case to fly the damaged area. And DJI Tower creates the real time map at the same time for decision maker to support him to better adjust their disaster operation. It took us only uh, 23 minutes and uh, we, uh, 
we fly and measure the area of about 0.8 square kilometers in this case. And this is another case of disaster assessment. It is actually an earthquake. And in this case, uh, uh, it just took 10 minutes to create this high resolution map. And we can clearly see the damaged area and the people could based on the quick, uh, based on the quickly sensed people uh, to those location to do the repair work. We can see the quality is really, really good. High resolution. And this case uh, is one case for city, city modeling in China. Uh, we can use it for uh, construction supervi supervisor. Uh, in this case, um, the flight time is 1.5, one, uh, one and a half hours. Uh, images is 900. Uh, around 140, and we took uh, the modeling job for around 0 0.62 square kilometers. And the 3D modeling is 6.3 hours. The WAN is 32, uh, 32 GB. The GSP is, uh, GST is 4 centimeter. Oh, this case is uh, is where we use Phantom 4 RDK for Asian building protection. We can use it to do the 3D model of, uh, of the Asian building. And then uh, the, repel, uh, the repel worker can take it as a reference. In this case, we took uh, 300 images and the modeling time is uh, 2.1 hours. And uh, I suppose other software will took four to seven hours. So the efficiency is really high. This is another case for precision serving and mapping. Mm, you can see that uh, uh, in this case, uh, compared with uh, the checkpoints, both horizontal and vertical uh, accuracy, are all within five centimeters. Uh, this is another case for, for measurement. Uh, we can use uh, Fanning for RDK and actually DJI Terra for the stock tile measurement. We can use it to, uh, to, to do the measurement for area and value and help for our mining management. This is another case for area inspection. Mm, we can see that with the high, uh, high resolution image, we can check the, we can check the area in detail. And this page also, we can check the detail clearly. Here's another case for Asian building modeling. Uh, this case, I suppose, it is a little, a little famous uh, in China for a Han temple in Datong County. Uh, in this case, uh, actually, this building is built more than uh, 1,500 years ago. And we use Fin for RDK to capture the images and digital terror for post processing 3D reconstruction. And the post time is also uh, is also quick. In the on uh, in the case of the high high quality. This is another case for construction supervision. Uh, actually, this building is Sky City. It is designed to be our new uh, headquarters, and we use Fenerbahce article to capture images for the quarter uh, for for the quarterly construction pro progress, and then uh, we can use this to to reconstruct the three D model. Hmm. 
the construction progress of the project can be uh, can be fully and intuitively displayed in the project pro uh, progress report, then that will do a great help for our for our construction supervision and management. This is actually a case of use fanning for uh, multispectrum to collect vegetation indicators. Mm, then we can use the indicators to be taken as a reference for urban planning. Uh, we can use the indicators to quick determine the land classification of the building, vegetation, soil, road, and the, uh, the engineer can do the, do the planning uh, in a short time and uh, with high quality. Uh, these are the cases. Uh, actually, DJI Tower, Fender for RTK, and Fender for Multispectrum are excellent tools to be used in many scenarios. We are always looking forward um, to you use it for how to maximize the use of this product. Uh, currently, we all know that the, the Fender for RTK, uh, our solution can be used for Asian building protecting telecommunication tower maintenance, city planning, servering, small scene modeling, uh, construction supervision, uh, supervision, and property management, digital agriculture, this kind of uh, scenario. But uh, we are thirsty for some more cases uh, of the real users because Users always have more and more excellent ideas uh, because uh, our solution is a tool. The users can, can maximize, uh, maximize the use of it. So it is always more than welcome that our dealers, you and our partners, and uh, could provide uh, your cases studies when using uh, our solutions because it could help it could better help both uh, you and me, uh, you and us to promote our solution locally. This part is really important for us. Uh, in, in this mapping application scenario, our main solution is Fanovo RDK, our mainstream solution. Uh, I think Fanovo RDK plus DJI Tower is really, uh, it is actually, very uh, professional combination. But considering that some customers may have some speci special needs or they uh, just have, uh, uh, have uh, some other aircraft and without any, any trends to, uh, to, uh, to capture uh, Fanny for RDK, then we have some other solutions for users to choose. For example, the solution of Metro 600 Pro is for some customers who already have Metro 600 Pro but do not intend to purchase uh, Fender for RDK. Then they can choose this option. They can also uh, be used for bridge inspection, city modeling, stockpile measurement, road river and power line cor corridor inspection, and traditional aerial, uh, aerial serving and mapping, but we do not promote it. Uh, two, two main reasons. One is that this solution is not professional in serving, uh, which means, of, let me raise an example. Uh, Fender for RDK can, uh, can support the compatibility with DJI Tower. Uh, we can use it to achieve real-time construction in real-time 3D point cloud, but Metro 600 Pro cannot support. And it is too heavy and not easy to be used uh, compared with Fender for RDK solution. Uh, here's uh, the JS, JS Pro of the, the application. Uh, actually, I suppose uh, guys who have Metro 600 will familiar with the function of, of it. Uh, 
It can enhance our drum operations with the DJI Quan Station uh, and iPad application. Uh, we can use it to conduct automated flight missions. We can use it to manage flight data on the, on the cloud, and we can also use it to uh, collaborate across projects. Uh, one benefit of Magic 600 uh, Pro, and maybe it is the only reason for us to promote it, is that it can support uh, third-party payloads if you have the special needs. We can use, uh, we can use Magic 600 Pro to support public photogrammetric camera. We can use it to work with light, uh, LiDAR. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I heard that someone else are speaking, so can I mute for a while? Then we can have the time to uh, to raise your question, and we will, uh, me and Eduardo, uh, will help your guys with the question. So sorry, guys, I mute. You. I, I have to mute you. And uh, by the way, I have to share the the attendance form. Okay, I have to go ahead. Uh, for the Metro 600 Pro uh, plus third-party uh, payloads, we can uh, use this for a lot of scenarios. City, uh, city planning, city renovation, uh, cadastro management, uh, public security keys, smart city emergency rescue, city planning, uh, territorial planning, construction which can all be supported by Fender for RDK and uh, almost, almost can be supported by Fender for RDK and DJI Tidal Solution. What cannot support it is the, is the LiDAR use, use, uh, use scenarios. Uh, we can use it to, to uh, for the uh, high, uh, high, pre uh, high precision topograph uh, topographic mapping, 3D modeling, drawing and inspection of power lines and pipelines, the stockpile measurement, 3D vegetation modeling, and the spectro, uh, structural inspection. This is the uh, application scenario we can do uh, with the Magic 600 Pro with LiDAR. And here's another uh, alternative solution. Uh, with uh, Matrix 210 RDK V2 plus Samus X7. Uh, we can use it for actually also a lot of application scenarios, construction, supervision, city modeling, etc., which we are familiar with, right? Uh, just like I mentioned, it should be equipped with Samus X7. Uh, we have two two uh, two two learns of the of the focus learns to support this solution. One is uh, twenty four and one is 30, 30, 35 for serving and mapping. We can use a pilot application to plan a route and use DJI Tower for two D and three D reconstruction. But th this reconstruction cannot be retired. We have to use the SD card to uh, for the transfer. Uh, for the transportation of the data, and then we can use DJI Tabra for the for the two D or three D reconstruction. It has some highlights, such as uh, a higher um, meager pixels, and it can fly uh, at a higher uh, at a higher flight height to enhance the efficiency. But actually, uh, we promote Fanfare RDK. Uh, the reason we already offered. Uh, one benefit of this solution is like the Matrix 600, because uh, Matrix 200 servers, we can support, uh, we can support, uh, we have multi-choices uh, of the payload. We can support a lot of third-party payloads, uh, such as LiDAR sensor, oblique camera, multispectral sensor, for our special needs. 
here's an case for the uh, compatibility with third party five public cameras. But this case, this camera is only uh, is can only be supported in China. That's one limitation. Mm. Uh, um, actually, uh, this page I like to share the uh, compatibility with third party software. Actually, build an ecosystem is extremely important for DJI, especially for serving and mapping industry. It is not possible for DJI to do the all works by ourselves from data processing part. Our goal is uh, we provide high level data to downstream software. For example, like BRM analysis, uh, content line design, GIS analysis, and we wish that in the near future, uh, data from our site could be a really reliable and major resource for those downstream software doing the analysis. Um, from hardware parts, uh, more serving and mapping related PSDK sensors could easily extend our solution in our mapping to a greater extent. The important thing is our, is our partners as you, we together to educate, training and promote our solution to every, uh, to every customers or if I say a large word, maybe to every corner of the earth, to every corner of the server industry. So that's my presentation for this training. Mm, thank you. And let me check the chat box. Um, if you have any questions. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ed. I, I see your support for, for the question. Thank you so much. Uh, I suppose a lot of a uh, question actually uh, is already supported by uh, Mr. Eduardo. And if you have any other questions, uh, could you please type in, in the chat box? Uh, I will go downstairs. Uh, but my photos are not sharp. Once it's okay, not once. I know this is not an isolated problem. John deploy takes sharp photos to improve it. Oh, this question I will report to the research group, but just like what I said before, actually we promote to use for RTK. The quality will be better and it will be more uh, flexible. Hello everyone, this is Eduardo from DJI Enterprise Europe. Uh, I've been answering a few of your questions during the chat during Rainer's presentation. Um, something to highlight regarding the Matrice 600 and LiDAR solutions. I've seen that quite some of you had been asking that topic. Um, Payload SDK uh, is not compatible with M600, so basically the only way of connecting a LiDAR system is it uh, a hard connection, so basically making sure that the M600 is carrying the LiDAR somehow, or you can have a level, certain level of integration with onboard SDK only. Uh, that being said, we don't really have visibility on the onboard SDK partners because onboard SDK is open source and anyone can just take it and start developing on it. And uh, yeah, payload SDK is not 
compatible with M600 only with M200. What I can say as of now is we do not have any uh, onboard TDK partner for LiDAR systems for Matrix 200s. So there is no possible recommendation that I can make to you at the moment. I hope that answers that question. And if there is any other, I guess that Rain or myself can take it. Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you so much. Oh, um, yes, another question that I can also take. Uh, the malfunction about the P4 multispectral. Uh, this is a known issue. And I'm afraid that for those who have the problem, uh, it needs to, uh, there needs to be a reset, uh, well, basically a reset, a machine reset needs to be performed. And the only way that that can, that can be done is by sending it to the after sales guys in either Holland or sorry, Netherlands or Germany. And they will perform that update. Uh, that software, well, it's not really a software, update, it's just a system reset to make sure that the country code is the one they're supposed to be. Um, I haven't been aware that the uh, that it is fixed as of now, but we're currently working on a, um, on a solution by software update. Just to make sure that there are no more cases, please, please, please make sure that once you update the machine and once you update the remote controller by a DJI Assistant 2, you select P4M and not P4R. Otherwise there is a, um, that is a compatibility problem between the machine and the remote controller. Yes. And no Android application for DJI GS Pro, only iOS based. Uh -uh. Uh, Vel Velodyne LiDAR is pretty much the same answer that I already said. Uh, the, uh, compatible is a really, it's quite a special word because nothing is compatible with DJI Matrix 600 unless there is an onboard SDK integration. And that fully depends on the solution integrator or partner performing that integration. We do not provide an off-the-shelf compatibility or off-the-shelf um, uh, connection between DJI Matrix 600 and third parties or third party components. Um, I can see there. Are, uh, Rainer, do you want to take the you want to take over the other questions, or shall I just jump in? Uh, uh, could you help for the questions? <laughs> well, um, one of the questions is about our, uh, about other softwares similar to DJI Terra third-party softwares, um, but <laughs> I can't really comment on competitors' products. Um, I cannot provide a comparison, a product comparison of what's the differences between Terra and those third-party applications. Uh, my recommendation is if you guys are interested, just basically get a DJI Terra uh, test license, if possible, from uh, our sales colleagues and just uh, compare it one by one. Uh, what, what I can say is that Terra has been specifically designed and developed for the Phantom 4 RTK. So you can expect a really good outcome out of it. Um, there's another question about M210 RTK with X7, 24 and 20, uh, 35 millimeter lenses. Yes, so the, the problem here is X4S got end of life, as we all know, and we wanted to provide a surveying solution for those customers already having Matrix 210. Uh, RTK, specifically RTK for surveying solutions. And that's why we decided to take the 24 and 35 millimeter lenses of the X7 that come with a mechanical shutter and specifically 
customize them for this type of operations. That being said, these cameras are not for surveying purposes, but we just develop and adjusted the software to, to make them work that way. But as my colleague Rainer mentioned in the past, the best, the one and only specifically designed machine for surveying and mapping operations is the Phantom 4 RTK. Uh, Piert, when you mentioned better solution that the Phantom 4 RTK, do you mean in terms of camera or do you mean in terms of uh, drone platform? Because that's completely different topics. If it's in camera wise, um, uh, X7 and X4S are completely different. And of course the platforms, but keep in mind that the entire workflow, the entire solution when it comes to surveying operations will be much better defined if we're using the Phantom 4 RTK. And I can see messages piling up. <laughs> All right, so um, any comment on Livebox later? Uh, no comments at the moment. Um, that's all I can say. <laughs> um, would you recommend using X5S with the matrices? Uh, well, it basically depends on the surveying, uh, the, the type of operation. If you're looking, if you have a matrix 210 RTK platform and you really, really, really want to use the machine for surveying operations, the solution is X7, 24 or 35 millimeters. X5S doesn't come with mechanical shutter. It's a, rolling shutter and even though it's a high resolution sensor it will not give you the the the, the resolution it will not give you the data quality that a mechanical shutter can provide you with <clears throat> well the, the, the 210, the matrix platform support the X5S, but no metadata is recorded in the pictures. That's correct. And that's exactly what I meant before by saying that the X7 is being adjusted software-wise to support surveying operations. One of those features was to include the EXIF data within the picture. That, that's something that the X5S doesn't provide. Uh, in terms of accuracy, in terms of uh, precision accuracy, both P4R and Matrix 210 RTK comes with the same RTK data. Uh, they both can connect to the RTK 2.0 base station, different base station, by the way, so they are not interchangeable, but they come with the same data accuracy and they can both connect to the RTK base station on NTRIP account, NTRIP uh, network RTK um, system and it's a centimeter. Um, I think it's an, around 1.52 centimeters data accuracy. Uh, well, that one is for Jax. Um, I can't really say what we're working on. I can't disclose our product roadmap, I'm afraid. And yes, if the P4 RTK camera, which is the X4S camera adjusted for the Phantom 4 uh, platform is not enough for customer requirements. Uh, yes, I mean, we would need to look at bigger platforms carrying bigger sensors and integrated somehow. Um, that's also why in the past we've been mentioned, we've been working with the Matrix 600 Pro platform and cameras uh, like Hasselblad or cameras uh, with bigger sensors stabilized with a running MX, for example. But again, we, this is, is, the, is the discussion that is a, is a conversation that I was having before with you guys. Uh, there is a machine that is not developed for surveying operations, but it comes with bigger sensor versus a machine that is designed for surveying and it comes with entire workflow that it may not be uh, it may not provide a higher quality as the one we can see with Sony cameras or Hasselblad cameras. So that's, I mean, that's depend. Different machines for different purposes. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Da, da, da. Um, Rainer, am I missing any 
question uh, or anything I'm that you want to but answer. i suppose no so if if any if if there is any new more questions please type in or any questions you have missed yeah and if if you guys have any question afterwards just feel free to send us an email um to Rainer and myself and we will we'll take it from there yes can you send an email you mean our email peter uh, yes 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 your email <laughs> yeah Maybe I can absolutely say it again sorry yeah this is my email i'm just happy. okay thank, thank you very much for for your email yeah, yeah. Those are our email addresses so you can Thank use. You. So is there any, uh, any other questions? Test in for uh, Tiona, what do you mean by test inform? Oh, ah. the attendance form. Yes. Uh, this time we do not have a quiz this time, but uh, next week I suppose we will have a final uh, quiz uh, because this time our presentation, our topic, have some overlap, overlapping ratio to our to the topic we shared last week. So this time, no quiz this time, but we will offer a final final quiz. Yep, that's right. So for the time being, just the attendance for for today. It's only attendance for. Uh, I'd like to share uh, the link. One more time before over. <laughs> <Last time. laughs> All right, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. Uh, well, I mean, as I said, we do not comment on our product roadmap and that counts feature timelines, platforms, everything. I'm afraid we cannot disclose it in uh, to the public it's, uh, confidential information. But if you have any specific question, um, just send me an email and we see case by case what we can talk about if we can talk about, okay. No uh, problem. Okay, no problem. All right, so yeah, I think we can we can close up for today, Rainer. Yeah, I suppose that's it. So thank you guys, have a nice day and please be safe and take care of yourself.